few months ago, my 2018 Chevrolet with L5P Duramax and it hit a half million miles and shortly after that, it lost oil pressure. Ran great, everything was great. Had one small oil leak, but no blow by, didn't use any oil, just lost oil pressure. Well, I was hoping it was something simple like a sending unit or something like that. I tried everything I needed to try while I was in Arizona, couldn't figure it out. So the transport bandits came to my rescue they have a youtube channel as well they i knew they were from their youtube channel but i'd never met them in person so they waited with me in seligman arizona to somebody picked up my trailer and drug me all the way back home to tennessee after i got back i kind of dropped the ball i didn't know which way i was going to go because the rates that came down the fuel went up parts are hard to get i didn't know if i wanted to do this anymore but eventually i figured the truck had to be fixed and then I needed to figure out what I was going to do because the jobs I was taking around the house just weren't enough to pay the bills and I did not enjoy what I was doing. So I picked up a used engine from Savannah, Tennessee, Raceway Auto Parts and decided I would just swap it in at least I have my truck back running. <laughs> bit of a road trip checked all my fluids got everything topped off made sure everything was topped off and uh, just kind of curious if you guys would guess where I'm going all my equipment back in fifth wheel back in trucks running great so this actually feels kind of weird um see all the stuff back here and everything else i made it back to indiana indiana transport um called them up last week and asked them how hard it would be for me to lease back on they said well you didn't technically quit you had engine issues and you know if you want to come back you're welcome to come on back so um the truck has been doing really good I had to replace the trailer brake control module because ever since I plugged into that big monster I took to San Diego, Santee, Santee, California. Ever since I took, hooked up to that one and took it out there, my trailer brake has been popping up, check trailer wire and check trailer wire. So I put that in, that got rid of the trailer brake control module codes in the computer. I checked it with the Autel uh, and then it popped up open and erratic signal coming from the front left hub assembly or wheel speed sensor so I changed that hub assembly and it was one that I'd already replaced with one from O'Reilly Auto Parts I want to say it was the Master Pro brand and the original one I don't think anything was wrong with the original I was just told by a lot of different people that it had noise in it when I, I took it in to get the tires rotated one day and they said that I had a noise in it and I took it to my tire guy and he said, eh, it's hard to tell. He said, but I, you know, it, it, there, I do hear something. I'm not saying it's a bearing failing and I, I heard it too, but I don't think it was a bearing failing. Anyway, it would sound more like brake rubbing as you spin the wheel. So I went ahead and replaced it on a whim with a Master Pro from O'Reilly's because I couldn't get a genuine AC Delco. And that one failed again already the original lasted over 400,000 miles that one lasted not even 40,000 miles not even 20,000 miles so anyway I'll put another one of those in and as soon as I can get parts I'm gonna do both hub assemblies all the brakes all the way around give it some TLC that it desperately needs 
Um, right now today the truck got 502 539 on it and that is pretty much that and the front brakes is about the only thing I can think of that I changed other than you know it does have a different engine in it now and it does have a uh, I did overhaul the rear end at 300,000, but the transmission is untouched. When I had the cab off putting the uh, engine in, I went ahead and replaced the transmission cooler lines that go from the transmission to the radiator. So when I ordered my ones that go to the auxiliary cooler, they sent me the ones that go to the radiator. So I, I didn't send them back, I just ordered the others to go with it. So anyway, um, Everybody says, man, I bet you're excited to be going back and all that stuff. And kind of, yeah, kind of no. I mean, on the one hand, I really like traveling. I really dislike trucking, any form of driving for money. So I'm getting that way anyway. It's really, I'm really turning that way, put it that way. But this is better than, definitely better than trucking. You know, I got the Freightliner and I drove it for a little bit. And that wasn't for me anymore. I did it for ages and it just wasn't for me anymore. Then I went and was going to help a buddy out driving dump truck and the dump truck got to have it where it was down all the time. It, he, he was having issues out of it. He couldn't get fixed. And this just seemed to be what I was supposed to do. It just seemed to be the best option at the time. So I do miss the traveling. Any of transport's got a ton of pros and cons that come with them. You know, I'll never sit here and say that it's the best company I ever worked for, but I definitely can't say it's the worst company I ever worked for. A lot of pros and cons. A lot of people ask me why I didn't try somewhere else. But I still have a little bit of anxiety about the truck having so many miles on it that something else is going to go, go bad, go wrong, go down. Um, and I'm familiar with, uh, I am familiar with Indiana Transport and how they operate and all that stuff. Um, I want to keep as much stuff familiar to me as I can. And honestly, out of what, from what I heard about all the rest of the companies up in Indiana, ever since I started my trucking career, one, one thing that I learned, they're all the same. I mean, at the end of the day, they're all the same. This month, one company I have better rates. Next month, another company I have better rates. Um, but overall, what gets what got me to come back to Indiana Transport is the fuel discount is extremely competitive with anybody else, and the rates are most of the time competitive with everybody else. And right now, they have a lot. See, from what I've heard, I've been asking. They seem to have a lot more freight, or steady, a lot steadier freight than other companies, and. Like I said, I'm already, already familiar with them and all that stuff. It just seemed like a no-brainer to go back. Especially when I called them, they said I didn't have to let an application or anything. Just come take a drug test and pick up my packet, my binder, and come on back to work. So Anyway, that's what we're doing today. I recorded a video of the engine swap for this truck where I pulled the, other, the cab off, pulled the engine out, and put the other one in. But my main priority was getting in and out of my buddy's shop as fast as I could. And um, I have right around 90 video clips to edit together so for you guys. So when I have time, that is high on the priority list. I want to get it done and over with and behind me because that's going to be, that's going to be a really tough video for me to edit. It's going to take some time. So don't look for it in the next week or so. Uh, but it will be coming up soon. I, I am planning on working on it every chance I get, but it's still, I don't have a lot of time here lately. That's one reason I haven't put out many videos here lately. When you're home trying to do home things and take care of stuff that you let go because, you know, well, it's just me at home. So um, I'm trying to do things that needed to be done while I was out on the road. And then I'm also Work, you know, trying to figure out about the truck, plus figure out ways to keep the bills paid and all that while I'm while I was at home. And uh, you know, this that's one thing I've, I've made a couple of videos talking about money, about maintenance money. How much should you put back? 
my answer still goes as much as you possibly can. If you don't have to have it to survive and pay the bills, put it back, save it up. Because I'm tapped out. I'm starting over from zero right now. So that's not a good place to be. But I've been off work since well, May, I think, from doing this. And the other stuff that I have done hasn't really paid that well. It's still ate up. Anything I had saved back is gone. So uh, you never know how big of a hit you're going to take whenever something does go wrong. So if you're doing this or just starting out or something like that and you're trying to figure out how much money you need to put back as much as you possibly can. So last night made it on up to Indiana. Uh, whenever I passed the right around the Seymour exit, I met up with Tony and he followed me up because he was leasing back into. And uh, we came on up, got drug tests and got everything straightened out and they gave us two loads to start off with. One going to Cincinnati, one going to Katy, Texas. So they're both gonna be bumper pulls and the old truck's doing good. It's 503,000 right now. So, and I was looking the other day, 1,465 miles what I put on it since I've got the engine in it. Everything seems to be checking out. But this will be the first load that I've had on it, so I'm kind of, kind of excited to get that first load out of the way. And I imagine if I know me, I'll go the Cincinnati trip, the Texas trip, and if I hadn't had any issues or seen any problems, I will probably grab one going long. All right, so this is a, I want to say it's 27 foot Jayco flight, and I got it hooked up. My weight distribution and all that cool stuff on. I don't know why the yellow tapes are on the jack handle. Um, everything seemed to be all good. Took my lug nuts. Check, keep my tires. Everything seemed to be all good. This is my first walk around to make sure the batteries, uh, the, that all the lights are working. So I should have taken these deals out, and I got to still got to put my tag on. It's been a while. That's normally the first thing I do. And I straight up forgot about it this go around. So I will put my tag on. I'll take these bumper in covers out. You just grab them, pull them, pull. And that'll be that. You're looking over these windows real good because if you can tell, there's furniture in there pushed up against that window. That's, a, that's awesome. I would have probably put them on the other side over there but whatever that's why they make the big bucks but a lot of people ask me how the truck how the truck's doing and it's killing it it's doing great it's like it was before so anyway i'm gonna get my tag put on and get the uh tag put on and make walk around one more time make sure i'm not forgetting anything since i've been not been doing this for a while and just give everything one more good check over and we'll get on the road. Well, here for delivery in the morning at 8.30. Compass RV in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. And they said we could just pull up right here in front of the sales department. Hang out. And Tony parked right up there. He's already crashed. Went to sleep. I was getting some paperwork done. And, uh, yeah, everything seemed to go really good on this one. Get up in the morning, they'll check it in, and we'll head on back up and get our loads going to Texas. Well, next morning, and Tony already got delivered and pulled around to get his paperwork, and I'm getting ready to be checked in so he gets back and take care of Tony. And, uh, checked everything out this morning. Everything's still looking good on the truck. Running good, doing good. Showed to get 11.5 coming out here with that camper, 28 foot Jayco. So I'm I'm all right with that. Just later on that night, and that first getting that first load off was, I mean, it it was a really easy load, but I do remember why I didn't pull short loads because it didn't pay enough. I mean, just flat out didn't pay enough. Um, hopefully the load going to Katie, I'll deliver it Monday. 
and hopefully it'll pay a little bit better it's more miles hopefully it'll pay a little bit better but the first two loads they give you when you lease in with Indiana Transport they pretty much assign you your first two loads and they're gonna give you the stuff that nobody else wants those first two loads you can bet if there's a load on the board that nobody else is taking that's what they're gonna give you you know that's what I've been told that's my that's the way I feel about it so these first two loads I didn't really expect to make make out very good on because if they were really good loads someone would already take them anyway uh, we'll get the load hooked up going to Katie hopefully I have a smooth trip down there the truck is running exceptionally good I don't want to talk too good about it because you know how it goes if you got something that's going good and you say something about it, it won't so but it is doing a great job um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I, I'm, I'm, I have not been putting out on a steady basis at all, and I apologize for all the randomness that I have put out because it's just kind of been all over the place, but I'm going to try to get back on a steady routine of posting videos. I, that's probably been... I've probably missed posting videos as much or more than I missed the RV transport, but I just... There's not been time. I've missed a scatterbrain that I'm all over the place and probably will continue to be that way, but I'm trying to get it gathered back up. Um, I saw that the channel is over 7,000 subscribers now. That is just mind-boggling, and I appreciate each and every one of you so much. Um, I haven't been able to get in the comments like I should. Uh, if you comment and I don't get back to you or I don't get right back to you, just know that it's not because I don't care. It's just that I've been getting, life has just been running me over. But like I say, the video of the engine swap, it's, it's coming. It's going to take me a while to get edited. But uh, it is on its way. I appreciate you guys so much. I'm going to get some sleep. I'll see you in the next video. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you one more time for watching.